The cerebellum, meaning little brain, is a structure located at the base of the brain. It contains over 50% of all the neurons in the brain and serves to coordinate other areas of the brain involved with movement, allowing them to work together to perform smooth, precise movements. If we cut through the cerebellum, we can see that it consists of a tightly folded layer of cortex surrounding a collection of underlying cerebellar nuclei connected by white matter tracts. All throughout the cerebellar cortex, the neurons are wired into the same basic circuit, repeated over and over again in parallel. In the deepest layer of the cortex, the granular layer, like granule cells, these are excitatory neurons which send their axons up into the outermost layer of the cortex, the molecular layer. Once here, the axons split into two and head off in two opposite directions. The axons of neighbouring granule cells line up, forming parallel lines, and for this reason they are called parallel fibres. The middle layer is the Purkinje cell layer, which contains neurons known as Purkinje cells. The dendrites of these neurons form massive elaborate tree-like structures in the molecular layer, and the axons also project out of the cortex to the deep cerebellar nuclei. These dendritic trees fan out at 90 degrees to the parallel fibres and form numerous synapses with them. There are also inhibitory interneurons throughout the cerebellar cortex, which provide a level of inhibition to balance the surrounding circuit. The cerebellum receives input from two main sources. Mossy fibres arise from a variety of brain areas, including the motor cortex and the spinal cord, and synapse onto the cerebellar cortex and deep cerebellar nuclei. These provide input to the granule cells and are thought to encode information about voluntary limb movements. Mossy fibres project diffusely to a large number of granule cells in the same plane. The other inputs are climbing fibres, which arise from the inferior olivary nucleus. This is an area of the medulla oblongata, which receives input from a variety of areas, including the ascending tracts in the spinal cord and areas of the cortex. Each climbing fibre tightly wraps around Purkinje cells, forming hundreds of synapses with it. Each Purkinje cell receives input from only one climbing fibre, but each climbing fibre sends an axon to approximately 10 Purkinje cells. The sole output of the cerebellar cortex is the Purkinje cell, which acts to inhibit the cells in the deep cerebellar nuclei. The output of the cerebellar nuclei is primarily to the thalamus and then into the premotor and motor cortices to alter the production of motor movements. Purkinje cells typically have two different modes of firing. Simple spikes are typical action potentials, which occur when the Purkinje cells are stimulated by the parallel fibres of granule cells. In contrast, complex spikes occur when the Purkinje cells are stimulated by the climbing fibres. The simultaneous activation of hundreds of synapses causes a broad, atypical spike, followed by a silent period with no spike. Another important aspect of cerebellar processing is synaptic plasticity. This is similar to the synaptic plasticity we have seen in previous videos, but with an important difference. When a parallel fibre synapse, and a climbing fibre synapse are both active at the same time. This triggers biochemical changes within the Purkinje cell, which causes it to internalise glutamate receptors from the parallel fibre synapse. This reduces the strength of the synapse between the parallel fibre and the Purkinje cell, and is known as long-term depression, or LTD. The opposite effect of the LTP we have seen previously. In summary, the cerebellum receives information about bodily movements from the motor cortex and spinal cord in the form of mossy and climbing fibres. These project to the Purkinje cells in the cerebellar cortex, which in turn project to the deep cerebellar nuclei. The cerebellar nuclei then project back to many of the same initial areas. The function of the cerebellum is thought to be able to fine-tune many aspects of this circuitry, potentially through synaptic plasticity, allowing it to modulate the firing of these motor areas and help produce smooth, coordinated movements. How this happens has been the subject of a number of different models. The first family of models focus on the Purkinje cell parallel fibre synapse. We can see that in the outermost layer of the cerebellar cortex, the Purkinje cells and parallel fibres form a dense perpendicular matrix, and these synapses can be individually altered through LTD. We can imagine this has the potential to learn and store a large variety of potential patterns. The most influential model in this family is the Mar Albus Ito model, which attempts to explain how the cerebellum allows us to learn proper motor control after it makes errors. In this model, the granule cells encode information about the current state of the muscles in the body 
and the body's position in space. They stimulate Purkinje cells relatively continuously, causing them to fire simple spikes to the deep nuclei, which in turn project to the cortex and modulate the current movement. If the body has made a motor error, it is assumed that the cerebellum is not coordinating the body correctly, and this is because an incorrect combination of Purkinje cells is activated. When the body makes an error in movement, the climbing fibers fire, providing information about this error. This triggers a complex spike in the Purkinje cells, and for a brief period of time after the spike, the Purkinje cell is prevented from firing, silencing a cell which presumably was contributing to the body making that motor error. Additionally, as the parallel fibre and the climbing fibre have been active simultaneously, the parallel fibre synapse undergoes LTD and the synapse is weakened. This means that in future, that parallel fibre may not stimulate the incorrect Purkinje cell. This model has recently been generalised into the adaptive filter model of the cerebellum. In this framework, the cerebellum can coordinate any kind of process. Each different component of the process, for example, each different muscle in a movement, is decomposed into individual inputs to different parallel fibres. Then, as long as the climbing fibre input can represent a suitable error signal, the strength of each of these connections to the Purkinje cell can be individually modulated by LTD. The relative strengths of each component can then be altered until the process can be performed smoothly without error. However, another family of models have focused on the role of the inferior alivary complex in providing the correct timing of movements. This is an area of the medulla oblongata, which receives input from a variety of areas, including the ascending tracts in the spinal cord and areas of the cortex. Individual inferior alivary nuclei neurons have an intrinsic subthreshold oscillation of their membrane potential. This is due to the existence of special ion channels, which open and close rhythmically as the voltage changes within the neuron. This enables these neurons to fire spontaneously in a rhythm between 1 and 10 Hz. Another special property of inferior alivary neurons is that they are connected by gap junctions. These are ion channels which directly connect two cells, meaning that unlike normal synapses, which use chemical neurotransmitters, current can flow directly between these neurons. This allows them to rapidly synchronize, and large ensembles of inferior alivary neurons can begin to fire together rhythmically. It is hypothesized that a particular group of synchronized inferior alivary neurons are able to synchronously activate a corresponding group of Purkinje cells, which in turn are able to synchronously activate the motor cortex to ensure that the muscle groups are activated at the same time in order to perform a coordinated movement. Neurons in the inferior alivary complex also receive inhibitory feedback from deep cerebellar nuclei. This feedback opens ion channels and allows current to flow freely in and out of the neurons and counteracts the current flowing between them, effectively decoupling them. This enables the cerebellum to reconfigure the inferior alivary neuron assembly into different patterns. It is hypothesized that when the required pattern of movement changes, feedback connections from the deep cerebellar nuclei alter the coupling between the inferior alivary cells to dissolve the previously active synchronous group and allow a new one to form, with the correct neurons responsible for the new movements. Traditionally, the cerebellum has thought to have been responsible purely for the coordination of motor functions. However, new evidence is showing that the cerebellum may also coordinate other areas of the brain. New studies have demonstrated connections from the prefrontal cortex to the cerebellar cortex, and those who have damage to the cerebellum can also have deficits beyond movement coordination, including problems with executive function and mood. This has been dubbed cerebellar cognitive affective syndrome. In conclusion, the cerebellar cortex is made up of repeating units of the same circuit. It receives information about the body's movements and position in space, and projects to the deep cerebellar nuclei, which in turn project back to the motor cortex and spinal cord, allowing the cerebellum to coordinate these areas and produce smooth movement. How exactly it does this is not yet fully understood. However, the cortex contains a grid-like matrix of connecting synapses, which can be individually modified allowing the cerebellar cortex to learn and refine specific patterns. The cerebellum also receives timing signals from the intrinsically oscillating cells of the inferior alivary complex, which can also reconfigure themselves in response to feedback to ensure the appropriate timing of motor signals. And while historically the cerebellum has thought to have been almost exclusively involved in motor control, recently it has become apparent that it may also serve to coordinate other, higher 
brain processes.